Hi, it's Dr. Z. In this video, I will review how the normal curve table can be used to determine the area under the curve for a specific z-score. By the end of this video, you'll be able to find the percentage under the normal curve for two different scenarios. There are two different scenarios where you will need to find the percentage under the normal curve. The first scenario is to find the percentage or proportion for a specific z-score. In other words, you are given the z-score and a specific area under the curve to use to find the percentage. These are the three steps to use. So let's get started with our first practice problem. As stated in an earlier video with word problems, I want you to list the key values or concepts first to simplify and solve. In this equation, IQ has a mean of 100 and an SD of 15. If a person has an IQ of 125, what percentage of people have higher IQs? In other words, they're looking for the X score. The, or in this case, the X score is 125, and they want to know what percentage of people have higher IQs. So let's start with step one. Step one is, if necessary, transform the X score into a Z score. Since we have an X score here, we're going to use our Z score formula. Z equals X minus M over SD. And then all we're going to do is plug in the information that we know. Our X score is 125. Our mean is 100. And our SD is 15. 125 minus 100 is 25. And 25 divided by 15 gives us a z-score of 1.67. But what's really important is that you remember to put whether it's a plus or a minus score. In this case, it's a plus because it's above the mean. Step two is to draw the graph and shade the area you're trying to find. So we're going to draw a simple normal distribution. Remember that in a normal distribution, the mean is always in the middle, and in this case, our mean is 100. But we're really interested in our X score of 125. So our X score here is 125, and we're interested in everything above 125 or this area over here. This area is what we would refer to as the percentage in the tail. Step three is the, then to use your normal curve table to find the percentage. You will go to your normal curve table, look in the Z column and find 1.67, and then scroll over, scroll over to the column for percentage in tail. Here is a sample of your normal curve table. So we go to the z-score column, scroll down till we find 1.67, and then you're going to go to the percent in tail column. And in this case, it's a 4.75, which is your final answer. So then 4.75% is your final answer for this problem. Let's go to our second practice problem. This second practice problem has a couple different twists. So first, we still have a mean of 100 and an SD of 15. The question here is, what percentage of people have IQ scores greater than Z equals negative 0.33. So we're looking for the percentage for a Z equals negative 0.33, but greater than. So let's go to our steps. Step one, 
If necessary, transform the X score into a Z score. Well, guess what? That step's done for us. It's already given to us. So I'm just going to rewrite it just so we know that our Z is a negative 0.33. So then let's go to step two. Step two, we need to graph and shade the area that we're looking for. So remember that in a symmetrical distribution, the mean is always in the middle. And the mean for a z-score is zero. And a z-score of a negative 0.33 falls below the mean, which is on this side. And so the question is asking for everything greater than a negative 0.33. In other words, it's asking for this whole shaded area, a whole big part. Now, we can break this part into two large areas. This first part is the z to the mean, because the mean is 0. And that is what we refer to as the mean to z column. Now, if you recall, in a symmetrical distribution, if you split it in half, one half is 50%, the other half is 50%. Well, we've shaded the entire top half, which is automatically 50%. So really, all we need to do is find out the area for this part and then add it to that 50%. So that's where we'll go to step three. Step three is you're going to use your normal curve table to find the percentage. So you'll go to the normal curve table, find z of a 0.33, and then scroll over to the mean to z column. Here is your normal curve table. So we go to the z column, find a 0.33, and then scroll to the percent mean to z column, which is 12.93. So we'll put a 12.93% here. The number one mistake students make is giving me that as the final answer. Remember, it wants everything greater than, so we need to add 50% to get our final answer of 62.93%. Now let's move to our second scenario. The second scenario is to find a z-score for a specific percentage. In other words, this scenario is asking you to do the reverse of the previous scenario. Now you will use the percentage to find the corresponding z-score. These are the four steps to use. Let's get started with our first question. We're still using an IQ with a mean of 100 and an SD of 15. Now we want to know what IQ score should be or would a person be to need to be in the bottom 25%. In other words, what IQ score or X score needs to be the bottom 25%. Step one is to actually start off with a graph and shade the area that you're trying to find. In this case, we have a normal distribution and we're interested in the bottom 25%. Remember, this is all 100%. This uh, above the mean is the top. The bottom is below the mean. So we're interested in this bottom area here, or we're interested in the tail area. And in this case, we know that this tail is 25%. So steps two and three, you will do at the same time. First part. Step two, you're going to use the normal curve table to find the percentage and then its corresponding z-score. In other words, you're going to use the normal curve table, go to the column labeled tail, 
find 25% and then scroll over to find the corresponding z-score. So we're going to look for the percentage in the tail. We're going to look for 25% or as close to it. We have two options here, a 25.14 or a 24.83. You can go over 25% as long as it's as close to it as possible. And in this case, 25.14 is closer to 25 than 24.83. So we find the 25%, scroll over, and the corresponding z-score is a 0 0.67. So we come back here and put a 0.67. But remember, this is steps two and three. Step three here is to decide if the Z is a plus or a minus. The blue star here is to remind you how important of a step this is and how common of a mistake students make when they miss this step. Now, remember the table only gives you a number for the Z-score. It doesn't tell you whether it's plus or minus. The plus or minus value is very important because it tells you whether it's above the mean, a plus sign, or below the mean for a minus sign. So then this is where we go back to our graph and our graph shows that we're looking at the bottom 25% or below the mean. So I'm gonna write this out. We're looking for below the mean. And if that's the case, this is a negative 0.67. Now, if our question was only asking for a z-score, this would be our final answer. But remember, this question is asking for an x-score. So we have to go one step further, step four. Step four is, if necessary, transform the z-score into an x-score. This blue star is to remind you that it's not always necessary to go this far into step four. It's only if they need an X score as the final answer. So since we need an X score, we need to use the X score formula, which is X equals Z times SD plus M. And at this point, we're just going to plug in the numbers that we found. We found a Z score of a negative 0.67. Our SD is 15, and then our mean is 100. A negative 0.67 times 15 gives us a negative 10.05, and we have to add 100 to that. Again, number one mistake students make is forget to subtract the negative from the 100, and when we do that, we get X equals 89. 0.95 as our final answer. In other words, an IQ of 89.95 is the bottom 25%. I have a bonus question that I want to throw at you, and this second example takes it up a notch. This bonus example is asking for a range of IQ scores. So what range of IQ scores includes the 95% of people in the middle range of IQ scores? So we have a mean of 100 and an SD of 15. They're asking for IQ scores. So they want to know the IQ scores for the middle 95%. So step one to draw this graph is going to be very important. So step one, we draw our normal distribution. It's asking for the middle 95%. So it's asking for this middle 95. Now remember, a normal distribution, the area under the curve adds up to 100%. So what's 100 minus 95? 5%. So we have 5% left over. Now the question is, is the 5% all over here? Or is the 5% all over here? 
how would it be split? Well, a normal distribution is symmetrical, meaning whatever happens over here has to happen over here. So that remaining 5% has to be split equally. 2.5% over here and a 2.5% over here. So we're really interested in what we've referred to as the tail. So now that we know that we're interested in the score here and the score here, we can go to step two. And remember, we're going to do just step two and step three at the same time, really. We're going to use the normal curve table to find percentage and then its corresponding z-score. So you're going to use the normal curve table, and we know it's the tail column. And we'll go to the tail column, scroll down till you find 2.5%, and then find the corresponding z-score. So here's our normal curve table. Our z column, percent moving to z, percent and tail. Our graph says we have to look at the tail, and we have to look in the tail for 2.5%. And well, you look at that, and exactly 2.5%. So we scroll over, and it's a Z of 1.96. So we put Z of 1.96. But wait, step three is to decide if it's a plus or a minus. So what is it? Is it a plus or a minus? Well, guess what, my friends? It's both. We're looking for the middle range, or what is the top score, and what's the bottom score. So we need a negative 1.96 and a z of a plus 1.96. Should write and. Okay. That would be our final answer if our question was asking for z scores. But our question is asking for scores, in this case, x scores. So we're going to go one more step further, step four. And with step four, we will use our formula x equals z times sd plus the mean. And we're just going to plug in our values. So we have a negative 1.96 over here. 15 plus 100, a negative 1.96 times 15 gives us a negative 29.4 plus 100. So then our X score is 70.6. But that's for the bottom part of the graph. Now we got to do the top. So we'll go over here. We'll do a plus 1.96 times 15 plus 100. A positive 1.96 times 15 gives us 29.4 plus 100. And we add those together and we get 129.4. In other words, the IQ scores of a 70.6, which is below the mean, and an IQ score of 1 point or 129.4 above the mean are the range of IQ scores for the middle 95% of IQ scores. Whew, that problem was tough. This practice example is a transition into how we will use z-scores, proportion, and probability when conducting inferential statistics.